Hello everyone and welcome to My Coloring Corner and today we're going to look at the Castle Arts colored pencils in our Monday Collection Mania. So Castle Arts is a wonderful company. They, they do have some really, really pretty um, extensive products. They cover a lot of pencils. They cover watercolor pencils. They have paints. They do a lot of different art supplies. Uh, what I have here is their uh, 120 colored pencil set. This is an older set, so I do not have numbers or names on the pencils, just numbers. I know that the newer sets come with names and numbers, um, but I don't have names. I just have numbers. So let's take a look at the swatch. Um, like I said, this is an older set. I can't guarantee that the numbers and, and whatnot are going to match up uh, between the new and the old. So we've got some wonderful yellows into some light browns, really nice colors, um, into our oranges, into our skin tones, and then into our reds and burgundies and reddish browns into our purples. I don't think this has a lot of reds, but it's all scattered throughout um, the numbering system. I'm really, really, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Terrible with sorting colored pencils by color if they're already numbered in a number order. I have a really, really hard time separating that number order. So I have them in number order, so they are not in color order. So that we have some pinks and then into our purples, blues. It has a really, really nice selection of blues and purples into our, our blue greens, into our greens, and then into uh, the dark. It goes from a light, like from a dark green into a medium green, into a lighter green, and then back into the dark green. I don't know. <laughs> and then we have some grays and some browns. Like I said, there isn't a huge selection of the darker browns, in the back of this set. There are a couple of lighter browns at the start of the set and then there's a couple of lighter browns down here and a couple more skin tones, light yellows, um, lots more pinks and a couple other reds as well and a purple. Like I said it seems to be all over the place. Oh I think I've got this all over the place. Sorry. So it goes into the purples there as well as up here and then on the back side we've got more purples and more blues and even more of the light blues and the ocean blues which should be over here like i said their their color uh numbers and and whatnot are all over the place and then we've got some more greens as well that should be over here and up in here also some browns, which should be here, and a couple of, a uh, bunch of the lighter grays, which should be over here in the grays. So, like I said, I think this part of it, uh, from probably 72, yeah, from 72 down, is an addition to their original set, and they just threw the colors in and numbered them. I don't think they they sorted them when they put them in. They just said, well, we want a 120 set, and these are the colors we're missing out of the 72 set. We need more of this color, more of this color, more of this color, and just added them all on the end. So, eh, it is what it is. And like I said, it's my own fault um, that they are all over the place in my set because I... I, for some reason, cannot break up a number system. So that is the Castle Art swatch sheet. We're going to put this over here for now because I'm going to need it in a little bit here. 
because of course we're going to color our our little swatch and see how these pencils hold up against the other ones that we're, we've colored. I'm just going to take just a second here. I will be right back. Well, I'm going to see if I can reach. I forgot to turn the TV volume off. And I know you probably can't hear it, but I can, and it's distracting me. So I turn that off, and I actually was able to reach. <laughs> so... And I got my new glasses so I can actually see up close and everything. I'm going to switch you over to the other camera here. Oh, and it needs to be adjusted. Figures. I did all the adjustments this morning. I don't know why it didn't stay adjusted. Sorry about that. So let's just that focus. I think that's a lot better. There we go. Oh, I forgot to hit save. <laughs> oh, trials and tribulations, trials and tribulations. Okay, let's fix that focus. I think that's good there. Apply. There we go. I hope that's better for you. So we're going to move the castle arts over here on the other part of my table so that I'm not hitting them with my elbow and I can still reach them. So I have uh, a lot of little of uh, not little I guess of, of books that I need to um, go through as well but we're not going to do that today we're going to uh, do that if I don't receive anything for thankful Thursday in the mail if I don't get a happy mail I'll be doing reviews of the books I got for Christmas which to me is still happy mail because it's presents <laughs> So the one that we're going to color is this wonderful little ship in the bottle here. So we need some ocean blue colors. Let's take a look here. So I think I need 105 and 106. Which should be right here yeah I have them arranged in my bag in this configuration as well so 105 is the darker of the blues and 106 is a nice greeny color so that's what we'll be using on the ocean itself I need of course to sharpen and I have always found with these pencils they do sharpen really really well i've never had a lot of breakage with them even with a regular sharpener uh, and i break pencils regularly with those hand sharpeners so so this is the darker of the blue so i'm just going to do the shadow areas with it of course And then we'll do the lighter teal greeny color over top of it. And into the depths here. Now because this is um, got the water in it as well as other um, factors uh, like the ship and the, the clouds and whatnot. Um, doing the blue for the bottle itself is going to be 
a little bit less than I would normally do because I am going to be doing a lot of blues in here. So I might actually do the bottle in say a purple or a different color like that so that the bottle stands out a little bit as a bottle. And I have you way up there, so you probably can't see a darn thing. So let's adjust that a little bit. There you go. Okay, so as you can see, this is laying down quite nicely. This is a 67 pound cardstock that I have this printed on. And this, of course, is uh, Joanna Basford's. Um, Oh, of course, now the name is going to get away from me there. Uh, it is her book that she put out, the little book that she put out for uh, free during coronavirus. And for some reason, the name of it is completely slipping my brain. But I will leave a link to it in the description so that if you decide that you want to color in it because it has some really cute cute pictures you can definitely do that so i'm just putting in i've, I've done it really dark at the bottom and i'm just adding a little bit of of shading to the rest of it now when i put the lighter color over top of it it will get blended into that and make those areas a little darker now, this one is pretty sharp, so I'm not going to worry too much about sharpening it. And we're just going to go over top of everything that we've already laid down. Which gives you that oceany kind of effect. And tomorrow's uh, Tips and Tricks Tuesday is going to be fun. I hope uh, everybody joins me for that. We will be coloring special things. And I'm going to leave it at that. It's a surprise. <laughs> well, it's not really a surprise. Because it will be, you know, broadcasts. And it'll be in the name of the broadcast, of course. But you're going to have to wait till tomorrow for it. <laughs> now we're just like I said we're just with a medium pressure going over everything in this area uh, whether you've colored it dark or not go over top of it it will help blend that in as well as remove any sort of white spot that uh, is left behind from that darker teal color And it gives it that oceany look. Now, if you find that you don't have enough of the blue in there, after doing that, of course, you can go back in, add a little bit more. And bring that, that blue color back up to the top. Or, you know, another thing you can also do and I do do this on occasion is not cover over top of it just color up to it now but because I wanted to um, keep that blue as a shadow not as a dominant color that's why I went over top of it now what we're going to do is we're going to take our wonderful 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 blending pencil now this is a Karen or Karen Dash uh, blending pencil and I received the two of these for Christmas and I used them <laughs> a lot. I love this thing. It just makes everything so pretty. And we're going to see if it'll blend this uh, colored pencil like it does with all the other ones. So I do have a bit of dusting there which 
is pretty normal, but it's absolutely minimal compared to what you would get um, if you were to use a Prisma blender or any other blender. And I'm just going to finish this off and then we're going to take a look. Now I am putting quite a bit of pressure. Now remember not to do this step until you have all of the colors in there that you want to have in there. And as you can see, there's very, very little on the blender itself. So you don't have to wipe that off nearly as much as you would a Prisma blender. It blends beautifully and it burnishes it at the same time and gives it that luscious little shine, which is wonderful. Now I'm going to give it a bit of a dust off because it did give a little bit of dust. Now, typically um, with that sort of blending, if you were to do it, say with a um, Prismacolor blender or anything like that, you're going to have a lot of the, those little dust fragments. I think I find that the Prisma blender works really well, um, but it does have a tendency to lift up quite a bit of color and pretty much erase it off your page instead of blending it in. You know, sometimes it just blends it in, but a lot of times I find that during that blending process, it lifts up quite a bit of color as well. All right. So that is the Karen Dash or Karen Dash um, blending pencil that I use. Now, what I want to do is I want to grab this because it has my Pris Prisma blender in it. And as you can see, there's this line here where that blue meets the green. And I'm just going to see if I can get that line to disappear a little bit. The Karen Dash didn't seem to do that. So let's see if the Prisma will without lifting up all the color. See, and it lifted up quite a bit of the color. But it did seem to eliminate a bit of that line. And I don't know if that's just because it picked it up or if it actually blended it in. But there's still a pretty dominant line there. But it's not a big deal because I want those areas to be lighter anyway. Because that's the top of the wave, the hump of the wave. So what I'm actually going to do, because that is the hump of the wave, so I'm actually going to give it a bit more of a light. And the way that I'm doing this is just by using a Faber-Castell pencil eraser. Um, these things are great. Uh, it's an actual, it feels like a pencil. It has a little brush on the end so that when you erase, you can brush off the excess, the erasable, the eraser parts. You know, so that you can definitely control where, where you're erasing a lot better with this um, pencil eraser than you can with a square eraser, round eraser, or anything like that, which is really cool. I'm just going to go down into that blue a little bit. See if I can get rid of that edge. There, that's a little better. Then, of course, we'll just go over it one more time with the blending pencil and just smooth it all out and that's one thing this Karen Dash blender does fabulously is just smooths it all out and just makes it all pretty all right now we're gonna 
grab some browns. So I need a light brown and a dark brown and a medium brown. So I'm going to grab these three. Maybe this one instead. Yeah. So I've got three different browns here. We've got a dark, a medium, and a light. So I, like I said, I don't know if they are the same numbers as on your set but this is number 117 is the dark one i'm going to use and i need to give it a sharpen and the medium is number 114 no 116 114 is a light brown And of course, it needs to sharpen. All right. So we're going to take the dark brown, which is number 117, and we're going to go in where the waves are hitting the boat and where the planks are on the boat. You don't need a whole lot of this dark, just enough to give the shadows that you want to have. And then we're going to take the medium, which was number 116. Yeah. Now this is a little bit readier than the first one. So it has a little bit more red in it. And we're just going to fill in all the areas that that shadow is going to hit and where it comes into the light color. And then we're going to take our light color, which is number 114. And we're just going to gently go over the shadow areas with it, just to finish it off. Now, if you find that your shadow area has been taken over a little bit, just bring it back in. With some colors, it's really easy to do your shadow areas but by doing uh, going light or dark to light. Um, with other pencils, I have noticed that it does seem to take over if you do it light to dark without putting down enough dark. Because I didn't go really heavy on that dark areas that light pencil just took it over and when it does that of course you just add a little bit more dark all right now we need and just be really really light handed with that lighter color and the second time going in just go right up to where that dark ends. Try not to go over top of it too much, just enough to blend it together. And of course on the bow here. And now we're going to actually sharpen this guy. Where is... I have a hand sharpener I, I like to use with it so and there it is now this hand sharpener is the Faber Castell um, eraser sharpener that my husband got me for Christmas and the reason why I prefer to do this with a hand sharpener is I find 
I don't waste it as much. Like if I was to do it in the crank sharpener, I I worry I'm wasting it. And I probably am not, but it's such a lovely pencil. I don't want to waste one ounce of it. <laughs> And they're not overly expensive either, which is great. And just blend it all together. Make it all pretty. All right. So that is that. Now I'm going to leave the sails white. So I'm just going to take a bit of gray and I'm just going to do a little bit of gray in, of course, the areas that are going to be in shadow. You may not be able to see that gray because it is really light. And against the white, it's really hard to see. Okay. Now, we're going to put that with those. And then we're going to grab a yellow. What yellow do we want? Okay, I want number 73, 75, 79, and um, 23. Okay, so I've decided, and this may be the wrong decision, uh, to make the background here a sunset. So because it's a small area, I will do it in colored pencil. I have not ever really done too many of these in colored pencil, so we'll see how this turns out. Now I am not going all the way up the neck of the bottle because I am going to do this area here and a little bit over top of the entire thing with a bit of purple so that it looks like it's in a purple bottle. But these pencils are laying down beautifully. They're doing really, really well. Now I am going to make sure that I leave a little bit of light area so that I can join those colors together. So I'm going to take the orange now and I'm just going to join that together with the red. And hopefully still keep you in camera. Now, of course, I'm just going to, once again, extend that orange up a little bit so that I can go over it with that light, uh, the medium yellow. Uh, 
And then we're going to take the medium yellow, go just over top of where we extended that dark, that orange, blend that together, and bring this up. And and then I'm going to take this really pale yellow and I'm just going to go into that yellow and blend it all together. And soften those edges up a little bit. But still keep the colors proper. Now, if you find that when you when you do this and you end up with a little bit of dark color on your pencil before you move up to the next spot, make sure that you wipe that off. Otherwise, you're going to end up blending the dark into the light, not the light into the dark. And that's not what you want to do. You want to go from light to dark. In this instance. because you want to try to keep that dark color, that light color, you know, all, all blended together, but separate at the same time. So that you get the two to the three different levels of brightness. And I am putting a little bit of pressure on it while I do this so that it pulls the, all those colors together and eliminates as much white spot as possible. All right, so there's our sunset. Now I'm just going to take this one and Eliminate any white spot that I've missed. Because, you know, you could miss some. And I'm really bad at missing white spot. Even with my new glasses. I got new glasses last week and I still... I can see it a lot better now, <laughs> but uh, now it drives me crazy because I can see it a lot better. Where before I couldn't see it very well, so it didn't bother me. But now I can see it, so it bothers me. And sometimes I leave the white spot because I like the texture it gives. But in this instance, I don't. In this instance, I want it to... Uh, Go away. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take the light gray again. And I know you probably can't see it very well. On 
here, but I've got it down here. Now I'm going to take the yellow and I'm just going to give it a little bit of the light from the sky coming through. And then we're going to take that gray and we're just going to go over top of it. So it gives it that light, but it darkens it up because it's being filtered through that material. Okay. And then we'll dust that off. And we'll take this gray and do the same thing here. And I'm just going to take it and just give it a little bit of a gray because some clouds are gray and some clouds are gray and white. This looks like a bunch of storm clouds starting to roll in. Though it's a very nice sunset. Then we're going to take this pale yellow and we're just going to fill that edge up a little bit. And then we're going to take this little bit deeper yellow and just go along the very very edges of a couple of the bumps here. just to give it that little bit of shine there. All right, now we're going to take a lovely, lovely dark blue. And we're going to do these little flags. And then we're going to take this light brown that we used for, I think this is the one. No, nope, this is the medium. Well, that's okay. I want the medium too. So I'm taking the medium. I'm going to outline the cork. And I'm going to take the light brown that we used on the ship, which is number 114, and I'm going to go over the cork color here. And I'm just going to draw it into the bottle line here. And I'm just putting a very, very faint shadow of it in the bottle, in the neck of the bottle, like that. So that you can see it's there, but it's not dark. It's not really dark. So now we're going to take these two purples. One is a really, really light pinky purple. One is a, a darker purple. We're going to sharpen this purple up. And this darker purple, what we're going to do is we're just going to go around the entire bottle, around the edges of it. The areas that are going to be thicker, we're going to cover a little bit more. Just 
don't worry about the colors that you have in there just go right on over top of them because those are inside you're now doing the bottle which is outside Now, because we blended this bottom part, it's of course not going to take that color very well, which is fine. I should have left it alone for a little bit and did that later, but not a big deal. It's still taking enough of it that it shows that bottom, bottom color. Just means I have to press a little bit harder, that's all. And I am, I'm pressing a little bit harder on that area because I've burnished it. Okay, so. Now that we've got the bottle color in, what we're going to do is we're going to take the lighter one, give it a sharpen. And go over different areas where those colors are going to meet together. Try not to press too hard, just enough to make it look like the bottle is on the outside of that color. If you press too hard, you're going to end up changing the color of everything in the bottle and you don't want to do that. You just want to make it look like the bottle is outside and the ornamentation is inside. The main areas to do this in, of course, are along the edges. Because those are the thickest areas. And where you're going to see the most contrast as well as up here on the neck because those are the thickest areas and where you're going to see the most contrast. And there we have our Castle Arts a Ship in a Bottle. All right, so in comparison, I think they did quite well. Um, for example, the Brunzeal above it is beautifully colored. Um, it laid down absolutely fantastic. The Castle Arts is a less expensive pencil, a way less expensive pencil, and does cover just as well as, say, the, the Brunzeals, the Blix. The Brunzeal covers a little bit, a little bit smoother, where I didn't have to blend it as much, but it's still an absolutely gorgeous pencil um, for the... For, well, for anybody, really, it, it's it's inexpensive, which is not a bad thing um, or a good thing. You know, it's it's a very, very, it lays down beautiful color. And it, uh, when I bought them, uh, weren't very expensive. But when I bought them, it was when Castle Arts first came out with them. So they were a lot cheaper then. Um, well, I won't even say cheaper. I'll say less expensive because they're not a cheap pencil. They um, lay down beautifully. The They are a wax base, which I don't use a lot of wax base pencils. Um, although pretty much everything here is a wax base. <laughs> I try not to use very many wax base pencils, though I am finding the more I color, the better I am getting with them. So I'm not, uh, I'm not constantly fighting them anymore where I used to, uh, constantly fight them. And as I color more and more and more, the, the more I learn on how to 
manipulate the wax to, to doing what I want it to do. Which, when you first start coloring, well, I, I know I did anyway. Um, when you first start coloring, you try to strong arm it. And uh, sometimes it's just a gentle push that you need to give it. Like, for example, that area that I just finished fixing up there, I saw that there was a really harsh line between that dark purple and the light purple. And normally what you would do is, of course, you know, what I would do when I first started was take my light pencil and, and color over it really hard to get that light to show through. Where instead, I'm just barely putting any pressure at all on it, just enough for that pencil to reach into that dark blue and pull it out a little bit or dark purple I mean and pull it out a little bit into that light purple just enough so that it doesn't have that harsh harsh line just like that um, so it blends beautifully uh, it does burnish quite well, obviously. <laughs> I wasn't able to put a whole lot of color back on there, but I was able to get enough in there to show that it is a bottle. Um, and, you know, the reds and reds and oranges and yellows are very vibrant. The the blues and, and purples and everything are extremely vibrant. Let me switch over to the other camera. Maybe we can get a better look at what those colors look like. Nope. For for some reason, my other camera um, is even worse. <laughs> but in comparison, um, if you look at all of the different swatches that we have here, they are all beautiful. Uh, every single one of them has covered the picture fantastic. Um, every single one of them looks pretty. And on the page, they all look pretty much the same. You know, and, and that's one thing that, that um, I have learned along the way is sometimes it's not the pencil that makes it beautiful. Well, it's always not the pencil that makes it beautiful. It is the skill that you use for your pencils. And if I could help you in any way, shape, or form learn anything that I have learned, I am more than happy to do so. I hope you enjoyed this video. Of course, once again, that is the Castle Art Studios uh, Colored Pencils. It is a 120 set. The new ones uh, do have the name and number on them. The old ones only have a number, um, but they're beautiful, absolutely gorgeous pencils. And one of these days when I wear these down, like I said, I don't use them a whole lot. So I have full, almost full pencils that are practically brand new. And when they wear down to a point where I'm no longer able to use them, I will buy a new set and hopefully have the names on them. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. I've got the numbers, so it's all good. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic Monday. Of course, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, and uh, always relax, color, and stay safe. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye for now.